DNA and genetic material. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. So DNA, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. So now coming to length of DNA. So more the number of base pairs, more will be its length. So base pair means nucleotides. So now for example E. coli. E. coli has 4.6 into 10 raised to power 6 base pairs. Then we have phage 174 that's a bacteriophage. It has 5386 nucleotides. Now coming to the chemical structure of DNA. So chemical structure of DNA it consists of nucleotides. So now nucleotide it further consists of nitrogenous base. sugar and a phosphate group so nitrogen space that means here it consists of purines and pyrimidines now purines purines are adenine and guanine and purines are adenine and guanine and pyrimidines they are cytosine and thymine so in case of uh, rna thymine is replaced by uracil so sugar that's a 5 carbon sugar that is pentose sugar and then coming uh, then we have phosphate group so now coming to glycosidic linkage so between nitrogenous space and 5 carbon ribose sugar here we have glycosidic bond so here then we have another term that is then we have another term nucleoside so it consists of sugar and base no phosphate group is there so this is the difference between nucleotide and nucleoside okay after that Then we have Chargaff rule. So Chargaff rule states that ratio between adenine and guanine, cytosine and sorry, adenine and thymine, cytosine and guanine is constant and equal to one. And it states that total number of purines is equal to total number of pyrimidines. Purines are adenine guanine, pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine. Okay, then coming to features or you can say characteristics of DNA. So DNA it consists of deoxyribonucleotides that means their base pairs are there so it is made up of two polynucleotide chain it is made up of two polynucleotide chains and its backbone it consists of sugar so the backbone of DNA it consists of sugar and phosphate and they have bases. So now coming to its direction they have anti parallel polarity. Anti parallel means they are opposite. Like if one strand goes from 5 dash to 3 dash the other strand will go move from 3 dash to 5 dash. So this is the orientation of DNA. So they have anti parallel polarity. Okay, then hydrogen bonds. 
so the bases in two strands are paired to hydrogen bonds like adenine it forms two double bond with uh, two double bonds with thymine and cytosine it forms three double bonds with guanine so hydrogen bonds so base pairs they are linked with next is hydrogen bonds next is hydrogen bonds so the bases in two strands they are paired through hydrogen bonds like adenine it forms two hydrogen bonds with thymine and cytosine forms three hydrogen bonds with guanine then they are in right handed fashion so the two chains they are coiled in right handed fashion and coming to pitch pitch of this helix is 3.4 nanometer and distance between base pairs so now dna that is it it is in right handed fashion and pitch of helix is 3.4 nanometer so dna is right it is in right handed fashion and the pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometer and distance between base pairs is 0.34 nanometer so now coming to stability so here the plane of one base pair stacks over the other right so th this confers stability of dna Okay, next coming to central dogma. So central dogma, it was proposed by Francis Crick. So it states that it states about genetic flow of information. So he states that the genetic information flows from DNA to RNA to protein. DNA. then to rna and then to protein so dna uh, you all know the process of formation of dna is known as replication then pr a process of formation of rna is called transcription then process of formation of protein from rna that is called translation so this is how genetic information flows then we have packaging of dna helix so you all know we have prokaryotes and we have eukaryotes so in prokaryotes we don't have nucleus so there are some proteins there are other proteins other than so now dna dna is wrapped around these proteins okay and it is organized in a structure called nucleoid because we don't have nucleus here so in prokaryotes such as e coli they don't have a well defined nucleus so dna is not scattered throughout the cell so dna is held with some proteins in a region that is called nucleoid whereas in eukaryotes here we have histones histones are basically positively charged proteins these are basic proteins example here we have lysine and arginine they all carry positive charge so proteins are basically amino acids so histones are rich in amino acids and those amino acids are lysine and arginine so now the histones they are organized into a unit of eight molecules eight means oct it forms a histone octamer so dna is wrapped around this histone octamer and this whole structure it forms a nucleosome so now if i if you see this nucleosome under chromatin right chromatin you can see this new uh, these black colored dots as nucleosome and uh, the string is chromatin so it will look like a beads on string structure
if we'll view, uh, if you'll view it under microscope okay next we have so this was about histo uh, histone proteins now we'll talk about non histone chromosomal now we'll talk about non histone chromosomal proteins and here we in here we have u chromatin now we now we'll talk about non histone chromosomal proteins here we have u chromatin and heterochromatin u means true so u chromatin that is light stained and it is loosely packed whereas heterochromatin is dark stained and is densely packed so euchromatin is transcriptionally active whereas heterochromatin is transcriptionally inactive okay thank you